Hey guys, so I saw this on the Twitter. It's actually quite interesting uh, on Twitter what they actually say, Tolarian and the Mana Source. They're much more open and they have a bigger personality. I do wish they would, the personality would show on their current videos, on their current YouTube videos, but I can understand why you would hide certain political beliefs and or ideology beliefs, which they both have plenty of. Anyway, he received this comment, and I thought it would be interesting to read the comment out loud. Now, I receive these comments every single day, multiple times a day. Tolarian says that he receives about a dozen comments like this every day, which makes sense because he's much bigger. So I guess it's not isolated to just the drama channels, it's Magic the Gathering in general. So let's read the comment to you. This guy almost defines Deuce. Look at him. You never want want to drink a beer with him. He has no idea the inner workings of Wizards of the Coast. But he talks like he does. I bet you he does not play MTGO. And I would highly recommend no one play that. Because your economy is going to go down to zero. That's kind of an add-on that I threw in for you guys. And plus, he's just siding with the masses that never got into MTGO and are capitated by Arena. No shit. Like, my gosh, you're an idiot. Not Tolarian, the, the dude. And Tolarian actually deleted his uh, name. That's good. I don't do that. Go ahead and make a video about the cost of Arena versus cost of MTGO. The numbers don't add up. Arena is insanely expensive, while MTGO is pretty fair. Also, F you. You are a punk with long hair and a small brain. You will lose your sponsors. It will be revealed that you touch kids. <laughs> this is pretty ridiculous. All that and more. You are a blank, blank, blank. I'm not going to repeat this word. Uh, you can maximize it if you want to read. Who speaks on things he knows little about. Oh, well, I was just siding with the crowd acting as a voice of the MTG generation. F you. You aren't the voice of shit. Paper magic is dying and soon will be phased out. Is this guy saying MTGO is the future of magic? And MTGO will one day... Yep, that's exactly what he said. I didn't even read the last line. I just knew. Be the only way to play magic. Arena is baby software for little babies who like to overpay for MTG. Go play x Mage if you can't keep up financially with cardboard concepts. With this bullshit. Which is a smart thing to do anyways. x Maze is an option. F supporting Wizards of the Coast. They took enough of our money. We invest way too much in cardboard concepts. And we should tr be trying to live forever. Work out infinite combo in real life. Duh. Pick up and the fin... Oh, Jesus. We want to live... Oh, my goodness. We want to live forever and not not blow our hard-earned creds on some shitty new set that will bottom out in within a year. I wake up this in the morning, and this shit is what pops up on my YouTube WTF. F this guy. Give us Rudy. <laughs> All right. So I used to assume, because I live just in my own bubble, that people really dislike me. But could it be that they're just trolls everywhere in our community and everyone's disliked? It could be a, I, I'm a troll. Who knows? Um, so this comment really got me to think about other people, other YouTubers, and maybe soften my stance a little bit. I do like the psychology behind the drama. That's what I want to do. But I think I can present it in a more professional way, like using psychology terminology. I did take one semester of psychology at NYU. Easiest A ever, by the way. Although you did have to like do stupid lab experiments. I think it was required. Otherwise, I don't think I did it. Maybe I was paid for them. I don't know, exactly know if they paid us or I... Oh, no, no. It was 10 free hours of service. And then any hour above 10 hours, you would get paid. That's what it was. I did like 50 hours or something like that. So I did get paid for 40 hours. Uh, back to this point. I think our community is really interesting. So when... Uh, what was that game? Mass Effect? No, not Mass Effect. Some type of game. Oh, uh, War of Warcraft. 
had a virus. Uh, one of the demons had a virus and it would spread out. And the scientists at the CDC actually wrote a paper about it. And there were like small pockets of resistance and, you know, how people dealt with the virus and War Warcraft before they fixed it. And it was kind of interesting to see like a zombie apocalypse actually happen, not in real life, but pretty close as a simulation. And that experience, that virus on War Warcraft, where you would instantly die, that's still being, uh, that is still being studied today. Just like the economic system of a game where you had, you know, free capital, you had capitalism at its best and you had people, materials, mats, they were selling them for a lot of money. And for real money, for real money, I think it was ELO or no, I don't forget what that game was, EVO, EVO, that was the game. EVO was a great experiment for economic for people interested in economics and how certain things would affect the economics of that of that community and it was very in that paper is still studied today just like the war warcraft virus is still studied in terms of how humans deal with viruses in short they're going to try to infect as many people as possible before they die and then the survivors would live in little groups so the magic community, I think, is a very interesting community because it is small. It is very, well, I don't want to say inclusive because it's not actually inclusive, but it tries to pretend to be something it is not. Like, it's supposedly going to help social change. One magic artwork at a time. It's fascinating, though. Like when you have different characters like Tolarian and Rudy and the Mana Source and formerly Unsleeved Media who's gone now. And you have different characters and they have different goals, right? So the Mana Source, he doesn't own a store. He cannot have a job. His entire goal is Magic the Gathering donations. Tolarian is about his brand image. And I think he's like, a, he's older than the Mana Source. He has a child. He is married. Um, and he lives in a, he used to live in a very expensive part of California. So I think he's more advanced in terms of his branding and his analogies. From a branding standpoint, it is fascinating to see uh, the difference between the Manosaurus and Tolarian Community College. You don't see any pictures of Tolarian in the hospital gown because that's not on brand, right? So it's interesting to see the divergence of those two when they were identical at one point in time. Uh, one of them decided to be the professor, and he has his hair, you know, he has his community professor experience, and that's his brand. Uh, the other one has decided to go with pity me, pity me, give me money, give me money. Uh, also, interestingly, is Rudy. I would not expect him to continue with his magic videos. I know he makes a lot of money from magic, and that's fine. I assume that he made more money from his restaurant business. Uh, that is definitely, a, I tutored the youngest son of Tillman Fredita, the owner of the Houston Rockets. And I used to be at his home all the time to tutor him uh, for high school, for his high school exams. And he pretty much kind of resembles Rudy a little bit. They, they, both in a restaurant business, both started with one restaurant. That's a very profitable business if you know what you're doing, but you have to be hyper-focused. Hyper-focused. And Tillman's worth five billion plus dollars right now, so that's kind of like a Rudy. And I'm really glad that we do have a Rudy because he changed how MTG Finance would be considered. Uh, it used to be that you could make stuff up and say that you have two thousand moats, and you could appear on podcasts, you could have um, Facebook, Skype chats, and post YouTube videos, and you. You know, all I want to see is your 2,000 moats. I don't care what, I don't, show me your 2,000 moats. But they would never show it to you because I don't think they had it. Uh, Rudy uh, changed the game by saying you have to show it. I own a store. I have infinite magic blister packs from Walmart. From here on out, I think Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I just have so many packs. And I have videos for the end of the year. From here until the very end of the year. Same with Pokemon. Um, I open tons of it because I own a store and I don't feel like selling my inventory. So why not just open it? 
You might think, oh, that's very foolish, but I mean, if you have the money, why not? Why not enjoy yourself? So it's been more about uh, the same with Open Boosters. He opened some really great stuff and because he has money. He changed the whole game. It's no longer enough to tell you about it. You have to show it. You absolutely have to show it now. And I prefer that much better than it was five years ago where everyone and their grandmother were saying they bought a thousand of this card that went up in price. And they then they would get on your podcast and then tell you about how awesome they were. And then not there's no receipts. There's no TCG player receipts. There's no emails. And then suddenly they're behind a paywall and telling you what to buy. He changed the game. Um, he made it so that you have to walk the walk. Which I appreciate. Because I've been saying that forever now. Uh, the same with, you know, the uh, Foil Liliana contest. Foil Snapcaster, I guess. But no one's going to pick that one, right? I don't even know why I had that there. Maybe because I assumed that Lily would be reprinted but Snap not. That was a possibility. That was a possibility. Because they're both from Innistrad. And I didn't think they would eat both of Innistrad's best cards up in one reprint set. But yeah, you send it, you track it, you make a video about it, you talk to the person, you verify all that information. That's the way it should be. You you pay your own shipping, you pay their tracking, you just ask for their address and they get sent to them, you give them a tracking number next day, you take off work, you take off half a day of work to send that card to them, and then she received the card, she was very, very grateful, and that's the end of that. That's the way it should be. If you spec on a card, I want to see it. Don't shoot it on a potato camera and then don't like. Rudy shows off his collection. That's good. Open Boosters opens packs in his collection. That's good. He doesn't talk about opening a Beta Black Lotus. He opens ones in front of you, in front of a camera. The psychology behind our MTG community is fascinating. It really is. Um, along the lines of Evo and even War Warcraft virus break outbreak, you can learn a lot marketing from our community. What people accept, what people don't accept, what people donate to, what people don't donate to. And I've been testing it out ever since. I've been using it as guinea pigs. Anyway, bye guys.